Hello, movie fans. Thanks so much for clicking on an episode of Side Flick. My name is Chris. We've got a lot of movie news to dive into here today, so let's not even waste any time and start talking. Some of the things we're going to be talking about here today is we're going to be breaking down some of the latest trailers that have been released, particularly some that have been shown at Star Wars Celebration. The first look to Indiana Jones 5, also the plot for Sony's Madam Web movie, hinting to the Spider-Verse. That along with so much more. So I'm going to need you guys to give me your opinions with everything we discussed here today. What did you enjoy? What didn't you enjoy? Which trailers hyped you up? What can you speculate from some of this news heading in some of the upcoming movies? Always love hearing from you guys down below. So let's just go ahead and get into it. Before we continue on with that, I want to go ahead and thank today's sponsor, Likewise. Likewise just launched their newest product, Likewise TV. And here on the channel, knowing that we're all basically movie fans, this is a service that you guys could really use. It's no secret that today we have way too many streaming services that it can become overwhelming on what exactly to watch. Well, thanks to Likewise TV, they've basically created a hub that lets you know what every popular streaming service has currently streaming, what's trending, what suits your needs. It's honestly such a brilliant service because it takes the hassle out of you jumping from streaming service app to streaming service app trying to figure out what am I going to watch while my food's getting cold. So I'm encouraging you guys go to likewisetv.com, create your own profile. It's completely free. You can even go ahead and follow my page where I share to you the movies I've hated so far this year, what I've liked. It's really a great service that goes ahead and helps you organize some of your streaming needs for whatever streaming service you might have. So again, go ahead and use the link in my description, check out the service and start taking the hassle out of what to watch on streaming. Thank you again to Likewise TV for sponsoring today's video. So starting off here with some of the trailers that have been released the past couple of days and rate them on trash or treasure because as you guys know one man's trash is another man's treasure and one of the first trailers that got revealed was Idris Elba's movie Beast. Now this is a movie I've talked about here on Side Flick before where we'll be following Idris Elba as a father with his two daughters who take a trip to Africa only to be hunted down by a lion. From that premise alone the movie had me hooked and I knew I was going to watch this so seeing the trailer I knew what to kind of expect. I knew this wasn't going to be a revolutionary movie or something that'll change cinema like Morbius. So admittedly, while the movie does feel a little cheesy and kind of like, really, what the heck is going on here? Idris Elba versus a big CGI lion? It's still something I want to see. I think it'll be a fun little blockbuster. Heck, they used to come out with movies like this all the time before the superhero action days. So in a weird way, I kind of miss when these movies would come out and be released in theaters because usually this would be now a streaming type movie movie. So knowing the movie probably won't turn out that great and it'll have a couple of flaws here and there. I just want to see something fun and this trailer lets me know it's going to be that so I'm going to give it a treasure. Then of course we have all these Star Wars Celebration trailers that were released yesterday so going through them starting off here with Willow. I'm going to be honest with you guys I have never seen the first Willow and I don't even know if I have any interest to. No offense to my Willow fans I know you guys are probably jumping up and down for this but we all have different tastes and like and this just seems like something that's not my cup of tea. However, with that said, it looks like Disney and Lucasfilm spared no expense and put some money into this thing because it looks like an epic journey. I have no idea what's really going on or what this world is about, but the visuals, the characters, some of the designs of these creatures, it all looks really good. So this is going to be one of those things I definitely want to hear from Willow fans in the comments section. Does this meet the expectations of what you are hoping for with this becoming a show on Disney Plus and a revival of an old movie? From there, we got another Star Wars Celebration trailer for Andor. This will be the Disney Plus series where it'll mainly be focusing on a planet and what they go through when something like the Empire starts to take over. Now I gotta admit, whenever they announced the show, I was kind of perplexed why they would do this. No offense to Star Wars fans, but I'm kind of tired of them going back into prequel territory, telling stories of characters where we know their fate and how they're gonna end, because Cassian Andor is the same guy who's in Rogue One, and well, if you've seen Rogue One, you know how that movie ends, and no Knowing that guy's fate and the end of his journey doesn't make me that interested to go back and see his start, how he became this rebel hero that would eventually do something so huge for the rebellion. However, I do like this new perspective on Star Wars where we're looking at basically regular citizens and how they act and are treated whenever the rebellion started to take over. I think that's just fascinating on its own. But I wonder if the more diehard Star Wars fans feel the same way I do. Are you curious for an Andor series when you already know how this guy's story ends? But moving on here you're talking about some of the more Star Wars celebration announcements that got made without trailers. We finally got the first look and details to Spider-Man No Way Home director John Watts' Star Wars show that he's been hinting at and is said to be the primary reason why he left Fantastic Four. His Star Wars show will be called Star Wars Skeleton Crew. It's aiming for a release in 2023, currently has Jude Law cast, but the plot of the show basically goes as Skeleton Crew will follow a group of 10-year-old kids from a small planet who get lost 
lost in that galaxy far, far away and must try to find their way home. The story will take place after Return of the Jedi and will fit within the timeline of The Mandalorian and Osaka. And here with the first look concept art, I think this actually sounds really intriguing. I like this idea of a childlike sense of wonder getting lost in the Star Wars world, then figuring out then how do we get back home. It could make for a really entertaining watch, but it does make me wonder why they felt the need to mention that it'll fit with the timeline of the Mandalorian and Asaka. Does that mean Skeleton Crew will then tie into those stories or we'll just see those characters kind of pass by? Still, there have been some reactions with fans that I've seen where they're like, oh, this feels like a Stranger Things knockoff or a dang kids show when John Watts on stage wanted to make it very clear just because there's a kid cast does not make this a kid show. Let me know what you guys think of Skeleton Crew and if it's something you'd check out. Now, aside from the Star Wars news, at Star Wars Celebration, they did show us our first look to Indiana Jones 5. This is the first image of it with Harrison Ford at the age of 78 when he filmed this. Yes, I know it's going to be a very old Indiana Jones, but I really do not care. I just want this movie to be good, and I have all the hopes in the world that it will be. I like what they're doing here with setting up this silhouette of Indiana Jones still going on some sort of journey. It's giving me Indiana Jones vibes. That's the one thing a lot of people are scared of is like, what's this movie going to feel like? Because it's the first Indiana Jones movie that will not be directed by Steven Spielberg. Instead, this one is being directed by James Mangold, who brought us Logan and Ford v Ferrari. And although some people are hesitant with that, like, I think that's one of the reasons I'm really excited for this. I think James Mangold is an amazing director, and I I feel like there could be something really refreshing with new eyes on Indiana Jones. As of right now, the film is still set to come out June 30th, 2023. I hope that's the case and we get a trailer soon, but I'm liking this first look. I'm excited for Indiana Jones 5. Really curious to what the title is. Surprised they didn't announce that at Star Wars Celebration. It's making people wonder if they're actually just going to call it Indiana Jones with no tagline. Let me know what you guys think of this first look at Indiana Jones 5 and if you're excited for the movie. But alright, final Star Wars Celebration topic here. Last night they released the first two episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is one of those Star Wars shows I actually was interested in wanting to check out because I kind of have a soft spot for the prequels. Always liked Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan and I thought Hayden Christensen as Darth Vader returning was so epic I had to see this rematch go down. So giving you my thought on the first two episodes and reminder I'm the most casual Star Wars fan there is. I really only check out the stuff that heads into theaters minus any of the animated movies. On the streaming side of things I only have interest in wanting to see the Mandalorian series and Obi-Wan and the nail in the coffin that'll make a lot of y'all hate me, my favorite Star Wars movie as of right now is The Last Jedi, unironically. You can see now why I don't really do solo breakdowns for Star Wars related things. My knowledge of Star Wars stuff really isn't there and the toxic hate I get for giving my honest opinion on this stuff makes it not fun to always talk about. So now that you kind of know that about me, I'm loving Obi-Wan Kenobi. This will be spoiler free if you haven't had a chance to check out those first two episodes, but I was actually really surprised with a lot of the twists and turns and heck, the main motivation of Obi-Wan throughout the series. Because they kept that pretty well hidden as far as I'm concerned. I don't really dig too much into Star Wars news, but I didn't see anyone talking about this before the show. The surprise character they throw in there and that kind of becomes the main mission for Obi-Wan in there... I love the addition of that character. I think the person portraying that character is doing a fantastic job. They have a lot of weight on their shoulders and they're carrying it really well. I also think it's kind of a great story point and side mission for Obi-Wan Kenobi because I was curious how this show was going to play out. I know Luke and Obi-Wan are not really supposed to meet up with each other until A New Hope when he's like 18. But now these first two episodes make it so clear on what this mission on in the arc that Obi-Wan has to go through because he's dealing with the trauma of thinking he just killed his best friend Anakin Skywalker. You feel that he's living with that guilt that he just wants to protect Luke, oversee him, but he's also lost his way. Seems like a common thing with older Jedi folks. You start growing a beard, living in a cave, and you don't even want to use the force anymore. But coming as someone who again is a casual Star Wars fan, it felt almost like classic Star Wars, like they were bringing in those sort of prequel vibes with the aesthetic of the new trilogy. In the prequel era, some things were just so heavily drowned out in CGI, it's kind of nice to see Obi-Wan in an atmosphere with a lot of practical effects and lighting set up. I guess the only drawback or nitpick I do have currently for this show is the main villain. And you don't really know who the main villain is until the end of episode two. That's who I'm talking about as the main villain. I'm not going to hate on them like I've seen a lot of people already start to hate on them. But even I myself is having a little trouble getting invested with them as a villain. They for sure are setting things up where we're going to learn a lot more about this character's backstory. And maybe that'll make me like them or find them more watchable or 
threatening as a bad guy for Obi-Wan. But right now, that's like the only weak point. And I feel so bad for saying that because I feel like this character is getting so much unnecessary hate for toxic reasons. But I do see the potential for them to grow and maybe me be more on board with them later on. So yeah, if you were curious about a casual Star Wars fan's thoughts on Obi-Wan Kenobi, thumbs up for me. I really want to know for some of you more diehard fans what you're thinking about this series, what you're loving, what you're not. I know some people are complaining that certain things in this show now contradicts with Rebels. And that's where I'm like, I'm glad I'm not too heavy into the Star Wars knowledge because I can enjoy it without my brain going, that doesn't fit with canon, but still really want to know from some of you diehard Star Wars fans. But okay, moving on to the Sony Spider-Man universe. I know everyone right now is still going crazy with Morbius. And I say that only half joking because believe it or not, for like the past four to five days straight, Morbius has trended on Twitter with people just memeing and making jokes. But it's that kind of dangerous behavior, y'all, that is going to get us a sequel accidentally greenlit. And I don't know if we're ready for that. Still, while we're waiting for that to happen, we did just finally get revealed the plot for the upcoming Madam Web movie. And I know I've been overusing this meme, but there was never a more perfect time to use it. The plot to me sounds... Intriguing. In the article they have it here, Sony shared a short description of the movie with Variety and Deadline, which revealed that the film will be an origin story of the clairvoyant Madam Web, whose psychic abilities allow her to see within the spider world. Repeat, Madam Web will have Madam Web using her psychic abilities to look into the spider world. You're telling me we're not gonna get a look at other spider people in her movie? That seems clear as day to me. Madam Web is basically a pre-Spider-Verse movie. So that means you can for sure expect scenes in Madam Web where she's using her abilities, looking into the spider world, and we could see all these different spider characters, Spider-Gwen, Spider-Man Noir, Spider-Ham. I don't know if we'll get Toby and Andrew in there, but I mean, it's a possibility now. I guess it should also be worth noting though that it only says that she'll be able to see into those worlds, so we're not really gonna be jumping into them it looks like. Insiders did say that Sony was treating Madam Web like their version of Doctor Strange so who knows we might actually see that. And I want to be hyped for this because who as a Spider-Man fan isn't going whoa scene within the spider world we're gonna get a movie where we see the different spider world but then you think Oh man, they did make Morbius, those post credit scenes, they're trying to make this connected universe. Tom Holland's still safe in the MCU, but he's one teleport away from being part of all this. I'm excited for where this could go, but I'm also extremely hesitant because I've seen what the Sony brand can do. This is where I want to throw it off to you Spider-Man fans. You hear about this being the plot for the Madam Web movie. Does this make you think we're going to see multiple Spider-Man characters? Will we be jumping into different worlds? Or what exactly do they mean by see into the spider world? But that is all the movie news we currently have going on right now, guys. I want Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch me talk some movie news. Don't be forgetting to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.